Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about Rhino Inside Revit, which a few people have asked me about recently. Rhino Inside was has been developed over the past few years. It's still in version one. It was in beta round for a couple of years, actually, in development. And the effort that's gone into development is amazing. It, this Rhino Inside, Grasshopper, and Revit, these three programs working together, I feel are a real game changer. It's all I use anymore. I'll, I'll show you a couple of projects that I've developed uh, using these as well. It's incredibly powerful. So let's jump straight in. Essentially, we get all the benefits of Rhino and its NURBS-based modeling and Grasshopper with its parametric modeling all integrated into Revit, which is great for all of our documentation and actually producing drawings. So let's take a look at how it works. So if you just Google Rhino Inside, you'll be able to find the main Rhino Inside webpage, which is a trove of information and getting started guides. This is really the place to come to if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to give a brief demo, but if you have any more questions or insights and want questions answering, then yeah, this is a place to get started. There's the forums and getting started guides which we'll click through. But yeah, you can download the plugin here. You're going to obviously need a Revit license, a Rhino and a Rhino license. Rhino McNeil do a free 90 day trial of Rhino here. So you can download that. Getting a lot out of this really requires quite a high level understanding of Revit, family structure, its properties and parameters, how types and families works and things like this and all the categories. Because this is how we're going to push our geometry from Grasshopper into Revit. So there's a ton of getting started guides here, which are really, really helpful. But you you, you really should take a look through this. Yeah, some videos pushing information uh, both ways as well. So Revit to Grasshopper and Grasshopper to Revit. And the guides here are very helpful as well as the forums. So yeah, I would suggest reading through these. These are really, really helpful. I'm going to give you a quick demo. So I have just a normal Revit session that has been opened. And once you're installed Rhino inside, you get this new tab here. And you have the now have the ability to launch Rhino within Revit, which is a total game changer. So it, you end up with, and because we're heavily using Grasshopper, you end up with three windows, which is a bit of a pain when you're using and having to present on one screen. So I'm going to just juggle things around. But normally you've got at least two screens. That's what I would suggest. And for this demo, we're just going to be building a, a quick tower. I'll go quickly through how this, well, not in detail, really. I, I just want to show you, uh, you know, all the elements that we're building. And it's this version of the Swiss Ray. But, you know, we've got floor plates. We have these angled columns. We have the facade panel and we have the kind of exoskeleton being built and also this cap geometry. So there's a few different types of geometry that are being built. And this is all Grasshopper. So we have, I, you know, I have my original setting out here, which is just based on these two grids. These two grids actually could be pulled from Revit as well. We have my setting out, which is just setting out all these curves, all these floor plates. This is going through a data block because we don't want to you know, push all these changes through far too quickly. And then we just have our element creation. So I'm creating my floor plates. I'm creating my you know, facade elements. I'm creating my, I think this is the surfaces and columns and the exoskeleton and that cap detail. So all the geometry is being created here. But the thing to keep in mind is that most of this is actually just for Rhino. So we are, and all these previews that you can see here, this is just previewing our Rhino geometry. And in some of these, we're, depending on the type, we're going to push to Revit as as, as themselves, just a, as geometry. But others, we're actually going to build Revit elements themselves. So we're going to go through these in detail. This is the only Rhino inside section in this whole script. So, you know, I have this big script. It's all just, it's all just Grasshopper. So again, to get a lot from these processes and doing com very complex things using this system. High level of Grasshopper and high level of Revit are really suggested. So let's go through and build our tower in Revit and we'll push all these changes through. So I'm going to move my, and you can see how quick this is as well. So I'm going to move my Grasshopper to the other side and we can start building these. So the first thing that we're going to do, I have a couple of levels set up already, but I can pull and I can create my levels based on the setting out of all my floor plates. So now I've just instantly created a level for every one of these floors. I'm labeling them them level this is level and I'm concatenating the floor number so it's level 20 we could we could change it to just L if you like it's level you know we change the annotation grasshopper is now controlling that element based on all the information if we update you know our setting out here our update our floor plates everything is going to push through into Revit so that's our first thing these are our levels we are the first thing that we're going to build though are our floor plates I'll just enable this and immediately we have our floor plates so this is actually just coming from if I show you 
what we're selecting in the Rhino window. This is actually just taking our curves. It's not taking the geometry. It's not taking the extruded geometry. We don't actually need that because what this is doing is we're we're finding the category. We're working out which family we actually want. So all these um, components are picking up families and their ele element types are directly from the Revit document. So I can select what type of floor that I want, and it's going to build it just from this curve. And these are all curved. You know, we could have freeform, we can have straight. It doesn't really matter. The, the whole system doesn't care too much. And we can quite easily change the type of floor that we want. So really understanding, you know, how to separate information out, assign information in our list to different elements is really, really important. So these are our floor plates. These have all been pushed through. We are going to do the same with our columns, quite a few columns, so this might take a second. And yeah, these are basically do, making some angled columns and again these are just the center lines if i move this over and show you this these are just the center lines of the columns we're not actually pushing any geometry this is creating and if i select these these are actual revit elements where these are revit columns revit floors within revit all being pushed through and again i can change the type if i like the facade panels we are going to actually i'm going to do the, the last two first which is just the cross bracing and the nose cone so this is another way of pushing geometry the the cross bracing doesn't really fall into a kind of type because it's it's a, it's a piece of geometry itself so we can't really maybe we could actually create this out of like uh, structural framings or but uh but yeah the purpose of this is to show you that we can import things as um, a, a new category which is these add, add geometry by direct shape and importing the breadth geometry directly into Revit and we can sign materials we can control everything here and we're go also going to do the same with the nose cone we're going to push these through into into Revit so we have our generic model we could actually set this to be a generic model and our nose cone for the for the top this is two ways already you know we've got generic models or direct shapes and then we also have actual Revit elements and geometry I've saved this one to last because this is my favorite and because we're going to now use what's known as adaptive component I'm just going to import this and this is essentially picking up our all of our facade panels and these are so in in Rhino these look like this this is basically just taken from our all my floor plates, I create my surface and I'm breaking this up based on some surfaces, aligned to the levels. So we have every single facade panel. This is these are going to be our glass panels um, has a surface associated to it. And I think this needs switching over to yeah this one. And so what this adaptive component does is it's going to take the corner points essentially of my surface panel and it's going to align a family in Revit to that same position. And because I and essentially this uh, family that's already set up is is already created in Revit. I already have this loaded in. So if I select one of these facade panels, you can see this is a generic model. It's, a, it's an adaptive component. If I double click it, I go into the family and you can see these points that are now getting mapped to every one of my corner points and the top and bottom center points of my of all of my facade panel. And we also are adding in the spandrel panel, which is which is controlled by the family itself. So going back to uh, Revit and, and this as a as a piece we now can control the spandrel panel based on a few different parameters and so every one of these essentially this is derived by a element type so it's an element type parameter so every single one of these can be different so what if we could control i'm just going to enable all this it might take a second because it reading reading parameters from um uh, from revit for some reason to uh, a little moment so we'll just wait here for a second and what we're doing is we're basically setting or we're finding that parameter the, which is the panel height. So I'm finding all my elements, I'm finding the panel height, I'm resetting the number to be, let's say, we'll reset it to be, uh, it's a thousand. So we can change all of these values all at once. So now I've, I've set my spandrel panel to be a one meter. So what if we do a bit of analysis though? And what if we take our facade panels, deconstruct them in the Z height and make a new, remap those numbers based on a domain? Well, now we could essentially put a parametric fade into our geometry. So this is controlling those Revit elements. So now at the bottom, we have a small spandrel panel, which is around 300 millimeters. And then this fades to the top to a two meter spandrel panel. We could, you know, base this on the a direction in a north and south, east and west direction, uh, you know, based on the sun or, you know, anything. So this is a really, really powerful way of controlling any Revit elements all at once. You know, we have 480 adaptive components. We have all of our direct
geometric shapes. How many columns do we have? We have 480 columns. We have 21 floor plates. And this is all being controlled at the same time. And let's just see how quick this is because, so I've got my floor plates here. This is just one shape. What if I wanted to do another option? I'm going to put a different, put this in, you know, as a crazy shape and see how long this takes to update. So everything is connected through. All, all these elements in Revit are being controlled by Grasshopper. And we can now push all of this geometry through again. And it will rebuild all those elements simultaneously because um, it's doing the same thing over and over. So it looks like it's rebuilt the adaptive components first. It's the floor plates of sub panels next. I mean, again, this is a, a good few uh, elements at once updating, but give it a minute and we'll um, we'll get there. So that was what less than less than thirty seconds. But to create you know very very complex geometry in Revit that is controlled through Grasshopper. And you know if we look at our floor plans, we get you know we can see all these elements that are being cut very beautifully cut because they are their floor plates, their columns. Everything is being created with you know, these are these are my adaptive facade panels, the adaptive components. We could also let's take a look at the section. We can draw a section through here and see what the uh, the section looks like um and yeah so again all these elements beautifully drawn beautifully controlled you know through through grasshopper very complex setting out very complex piece of design but all controlled through the new rhino inside plugin so one of the other reasons why this is a really really good is because we get we also have access to the all of grasshoppers plugin so i'm going to just enable this section which is a some environmental analysis so this is taking my location data and weather file that I already have preloaded in here. We are, can create our sun paths from this and we can do sunlight hour analysis on our, the shape or our building facade. And if we turn on the viewport as well in Revit, we should be able to see this in Revit as well. So this is running some basic sunlight hour analysis and uh, creating our sun paths for our building. So we can just test the facade and see you know, how many hours of sunlight are hitting each facade panel. And we can actually view this and push this into Revit as well. We're, we're actually just kind of viewing this within Revit. So, you know, all the other elements around, this could be quite helpful information. So everything that we used to be able to do in Grasshopper, we can now do in Revit. So I hope you found this video useful and explained a little bit more about the use cases of Rhino Inside. Um, it really is a game changer of a workflow. Uh, the video playing now is a facade I did recently, which is you know, thousands and thousands of elements controlled from Grasshopper and pushed through to Revit. So every single fin, floor plate, glazing panel was all controlled from a Grasshopper script and pushed through to Revit. So design changes can be controlled very easily or much easier than before and not take as much time. So thanks for watching again. I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions.